This channel is firmly of the opinion that the West is at war with a chaotic form of globalism that has more than one leader and is intent on replacing national democracies and liberties with a global autocracy. We believe the globalists' aims are naive to the point of madness and existentially dangerous to the nations of the West. These points succinctly summarise this channel's research on globalism and the New World Order. This video will concentrate our attention on this statement. That the globalists groom and appoint presidents, prime ministers, chancellors and entire governments and then control them, just as puppet masters control puppets. Many people, although in sympathy with the ideas of this channel, believe this statement to be extreme. A series of videos will be produced by this channel to show that this is not the case. Today, we start with the role of United Kingdom Chancellor of the Exchequer and Mr Rishi Sunak. You will see how Rishi Sunak, UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, was globalised and made a puppet of the World Economic Forum and globalist leaders of the New World Order. I must say at this stage that this is not in any way intended as a personal attack on Mr Sunak or his family. That he and his family are respectable, decent people, in fact, makes this story even more alarming. We start with a few statements from Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. The pandemic represents, he says, a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine and reset our world. In 2020, he said, to achieve a better outcome, the world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies. In short, we need a great reset of capitalism. As well as the COVID-19 pandemic offering a narrow window, Mr Schwab has invited participants of the World Economic Forum conference to set a target to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 or sooner. It was then stated at the COP26 Finance Day speech November 2021. So, our third action is to rewire the entire global financial system for net zero. But it was not Schwab that said that. It was Mr Rishi Sunak, the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer. Our third action is to rewire the entire global financial system. Thus spoke a man with only around six years experience of national politics and less than two years experience as Chancellor. His track record is not unblemished. Mr Sunak was appointed UK Chancellor on February 13, 2020. And at the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic, he was a member of the cabinet that planned and agreed the first UK lockdown announced by Boris Johnson on March 23, 2020. Very briefly, we will look at how someone that believes he can rewrite the entire global financial system for net zero performed during the COVID-19 lockdown in the UK. Mr Sunak put forward several schemes to help the British people and especially businesses cope with lockdown. He announced the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme where the UK government would cover 80% of a furloughed employee wages up to £2,500 per month. This was duly noted on the WF's website. He made available the coronavirus bounce back loan and the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme. It may be fair to say that these schemes looked quite good on a spreadsheet, 
but did not take into account the harsh practicalities and realities of the commercial world that includes corruption and fraud. In June 2021, the Department for Business estimated the bounce-back loan scheme would cost the taxpayer £27 billion in fraud or credit losses. In November 2021, it was reported that the furlough scheme had suffered a loss of £5.2 billion due to fraud. In January 2022, it was estimated that up to £5 billion worth of loans had in fact been paid out to fraudsters. As a result of this mismanagement, Lord Agnew quit his role as Treasury Minister and called oversight of schemes nothing less than woeful. There thus seems to be a huge gap between the UK Chancellor's current track record and the enormous task of rewiring the entire global financial system for net zero. But how did someone with very limited political experience come to be in this position and how were his global philosophies inculcated? To answer this, we need to look at Mr Sunak's background. Mr Sunak describes himself as a first-generation immigrant. His parents of Indian descent emigrated to the UK from East Africa. Mr Sunak's father was an NHS GP and his mother ran a small chemist shop or pharmacy. He was born on 12 May 1980 in Southampton, Hampshire, England. He was a graduate of £42,000 a year Winchester College and Oxford University, where he studied PPE. In 2006, Sunak obtained an MBA from Stanford University, where he was a Fulbright Scholar. This is important. There are close links between Fulbright Scholars and the World Economic Forum. We will pick a random example to demonstrate the connection. Miss Nima Elmi is the Head of Government Affairs, Centre for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, World Economic Forum. She is a UK Fulbright Scholar. According to its website, Nima was selected to join the Forum of Young Global Leaders by the World Economic Forum in 2016. This demonstrates one example of the young, intelligent people who are utterly committed to globalist ideas that Mr Sunak will have rubbed shoulders with at Stanford University. He met another intelligent woman at Stanford, his future wife, Akshata. Akshata's father, N. R. Narayana Murthy, is India's sixth wealthiest man and is believed to be worth over three billion US dollars. Mr. Murthy made his wealth through an IT company, Infosys. And this brings us to another important connection with globalism. Infosys is a company based in India. Mr. Murthy, although retired, still features strongly on the Infosys website. Its core capabilities require strong, large customers such as Pfizer and national governments for whom it develops systems such as baby birth ID registration. Infosys grew to its present size directly as a result of one aspect of globalization, that is outsourcing, where large companies and national governments reduce the work carried out nationally and outsource this work to companies in other countries, such as Infosys in India. To cope with work visas, international payments, etc., it is essential that outsourcing companies have a close working relationship with governments. Here you see, as an example, Mr. Murthy with Russian President Putin. The connection between globalism and outsourcing is strong. This CGSRS report notes that globalization has led to an increase in the level of outsourcing of activities and functions by organizations. And very relevantly for this video, outsourcing 
has promoted the globalization and the integration of different national economies, resulting in a common global economy. The similarity of this statement with that of the UK Chancellor is clear. We left Mr Sunak's background at the point where he had met his wife. The couple married in her home city of Bangalore, India, in 2009 in a two-day ceremony attended by 1,000 guests. The very next year, Mr Sunak's father-in-law, Mr Murthy, met David Cameron, the UK Prime Minister. Who knows, Mr Murthy may have mentioned that he now has a son-in-law who was keen to enter politics. Was there a way this could be expedited? And who knows, Mr Cameron may have mentioned that a contribution to the Conservative Party might help. In any event, Rishi Sunak was selected as the Conservative candidate for Richmond, Yorkshire in October 2014. The seat had previously been held by William Haig, a former leader of the party, Foreign Secretary and First Secretary of State, who chose to stand down at the following general election. This was perhaps the safest seat to win for a Conservative candidate in the United Kingdom. You have to wonder why it was offered to Mr Sunak over other loyal Conservative Party members. Whatever the rationale behind his selection, a few months later in January 2015, the World Economic Forum reported that an important sponsor of Mr Sunak, Prime Minister Cameron, had met US President Obama to discuss economic prosperity. A few months later, Mr Sunak was duly elected as MP for the Richmond constituency in the 2015 general election. He was then appointed as Chief Secretary to the Treasury by Prime Minister Boris Johnson on 24 July 2019 and served under Chancellor Sajid Javid until February 2020. At which point he replaced Sajid Javid and was appointed UK Chancellor of the Exchequer February 2020. He was then able to follow the objectives of his globalist masters, as do many other politicians. Let us be very clear, this particular objective is to implement a global financial and economic system, no matter what effect that has on individual nations. And many nations, including the UK, are seeing their standard of living being gradually but relentlessly reduced. As this tweet on April 2022 says, I can no longer afford heating. I can no longer afford to put fuel in my car. This is no exaggeration. Their plan is to keep ramping the cost of living up and up until we reach a point where... We accept centralised digital currency with open arms. I want a revolution instead. And although Rishi Sunak had announced his spring budget in March, many people, including Sir John Redwood, the UK Conservative Party politician, are calling for an emergency budget to tackle the cost of living crisis in the United Kingdom. This issue is a direct result of how the globalists, and in particular Klaus Schwab, perceive and define the world. In their simplistic and naive and destructive perception, the world contains every country from the United States to China. But China, India, Russia, as well as much of Africa and the Middle East, have their own nationalistic plans. They watch while the West faces chaos from the globalists while they take advantage of each globalist blunder. This video has demonstrated the ease with which globalists can appoint government members. But the major conclusion should be that the attempted implementation of net zero 
the Paris Agreement, UN Agenda 2030 and globalization in general will eventually fail. But in the meantime, it will have a catastrophic impact on the West. This community combines the topics of climate change, COVID-19 and the New World Order. If you would like to join our community, you can find us on locals.com. The New World Order. This link will take you directly to our site.